Welcome to the Novantis Helping People Do Great Things webinar series. Thanks for joining us here today. My name is Andy Papadopoulos. I'm the CEO here at Novantis. I'm joined today by Colonel Young Yohan, our VP of Sales Operations. If you have applications and services running on the Windows Server 2003 platform, then there's a very important date you need to keep in mind. On July 14th, Microsoft will end support for Windows Server 2003. Today's webinar is about how Navantis can help you modernize your applications and services to the new world. Migrating your applications and services to Windows Server 2012 should not be a like-for-like -like transition. Like-for-like -like does not deliver on real value. If I ask a number of IT professionals what the value of this machine is, I get a number of typical responses. Things such as it has a five and a half horsepower motor. It's capable of supporting a 300 pound person. It's able to incline 17 and a half degrees. It has an iPod connector to allow you to listen to your music while you're on the treadmill. But how the machine functions, it's not its real value. How many times it's used, how often you have to perform maintenance on it. That kind of stuff is not where the value gets generated. This machine only generates value when a human being interacts with it. Until a person steps onto this machine and starts to use it, do we start to see any value from it? And even until then, the value only comes from the results that are achieved from the combination of the person and the machine. The value comes from the ability for that individual to lose 10 pounds, for their heart rate to go down, for them to be able to take less medication. The value stems from the combination of the user and the machine achieving a result. So in that same context, how is this machine any different? Again, from an IT perspective, it has characteristics of performance. It has RAM, it has CPUs, it has compute power. But this equipment has no value until an application is loaded on it. And again, a number of servers running an application still has little value. The value only stems when a human being interacts with that application running on that hardware to then achieve a result. The results need to be measured to determine its true value. So there's three key areas where the business can see value from IT. And, and we kind of put all our application services in, into one of these three buckets. And each of these buckets has a different level of value. So the run bucket is all about just keeping that which was there yesterday running today. It's a little bit of your like for like. We just want to be sure that whatever we paid for is going to work when everyone shows up in the morning and that it's going to function the same way. But growth is about scaling capacity and capabilities. It's about how do we grow business value so that we're making more revenues and the company's generating profits from its existing clients. When we start getting into transform activities, it's about changing how the business runs, finding new ways to do business, expanding your market. It's about doing something that's going to make the business better than it was yesterday. You may have an application or service that you need to modernize, something that you now need to take from the old world to the new world. And like most projects that we run in IT, we have a very good handle and predictability around a number of the technical factors. We know where the data is. We know how, what permissions we want to set on it. We look for opportunities to consolidate the services of the applications, how to extend it across new hardware to get maximum performance out of it. Look for opportunities to extend it to an unlimited number of devices from any location. But when we build our treadmill and we make it the best treadmill possible, we still have to get someone to step on that treadmill. We still have to have user interaction with that treadmill. And again, until someone starts producing results with it, is where we'll see success. So when we start talking to our clients around application modernization, our focus needs to start truly being about what result and what use will our users see value from. 
An application migration is generally done uh, to upgrade software and doesn't necessarily translate into value for the business users. Generally, these migrations are triggered because you're on unsupported software, like in the Windows 2003 environment, and you're going to migrate like for like into a new upgraded software environment. The result is that the end users have to participate in the migration, it's painful for them, and they don't necessarily see a lot of benefit. People love their applications. They use them in their everyday lives. They use them at work. Your children are using them. It's become part of our everyday. It's a tool that we use to do work every day. Applications don't transform businesses. People do. It's an interesting shift when you think of people first and you're designing applications because your priorities change in that design. When you're designing the application, you need to think about the two facets. You need to think about the application and the technical side, but you also need to consider the people side. A migration shouldn't just be a check mark. Yes, we got it migrated. We really want to take advantage of taking the time to improve the application as part of the migration and think about the end users. You want to make sure that there's a balance because it's always a bit of a tug of war between technology and people. And the way to balance that is to come up with a plan, an approach, and a methodology to ensure that both voices or both inputs are heard as you're considering your design for the application migration. Our premise at Navantis is that you have to enable people. It has to be one of the key priorities when you're, when you're thinking about that plan and that design. Another key premise is measurement. Whatever the goals are, and we have to discover what the goals are for the application migration, what, are, what is the business value, we need to figure out what those goals are, and those goals have to be measurable. We want to measure those goals as part of the migration process, and we need to use this, those same goals as a way to measure the application in steady state. And by steady state, I mean once you're operating the solution for a long period of time, it goes into steady state. We want to make sure that whatever value we'd hoped to provide to the users when we planned our migration and our design is still being delivered after we've operated the system for some time after the migration. It's very, very important to think about designing a solution for the long term because end users are constantly going to be looking for improvements. They want to see more value being delivered to them. And when you think about the tools that they use in their own uh, at home or at school, those those solutions are evolving constantly. And I think in the enterprise, in the enterprise space, we also need to constantly evolve and innovate and provide our uh, constituents or stakeholders with new improvements to the tools. The way we achieve this is by going through an iterative cycle. Everything we do, we break out into small chunks and we start with learning. We learn about what functionality the users are using in the application, what functionality they're not using in the application. And we think about how we're going to build that into an iterative cycle so that we build a small chunk of the functionality, move it out to the end user community to use, measure that usage and see what's sticking, what's actually working well for the users and what's not working well for the users. This iterative approach reduces a lot of risk and also uh, a risk around change management and also risk around technical risks because we can see how the solution is functioning early on. When we think about getting started with the migration and the design, we think about a funnel and we think about asking the right questions. That's the top layer of the funnel and then narrowing it down, narrowing down the functionality, the questions we ask and what we're measuring as we move down deeper into the funnel. And hopefully we've reduced the amount of things we need to push through that funnel. When we think of requirements, we may have some requirements or some things in the existing application that were important a few years ago when we built the application that are no longer important today. So we try to move through and narrow through that funnel as much as possible and eliminate as much of the functionality that we eliminate as much of the functionality we don't need to migrate uh, as we can as we as we stream through that funnel. So we start by asking the right questions, then we go into learning. 
We have a number of tools and processes that we use to learn about the application. We focus on learning uh, about the technical aspects of the function of, of the solution, what's working well technically, and we learn about what's working well for the end users. Together, those should those those metrics should align with our goals that we've established early on uh, as part of the migration design. Some of the uh, metrics that we're, we're tracking are end user response time per page and per site. If an end user has to wait too long for a page to render, we know that we've already lost their attention. It's frustrating for them and they will leave or, or leave dissatisfied with the application. Another uh, set of metrics that we measure are what are the features and functions end users are using and what are they not using again we're doing we're ex we're going to be exercising a design exercise and hopefully we can eliminate some of the functionality that we had in the existing application and not migrate it at all because it's just not being used it will save a lot of time and effort uh, as part of the migration. And then going forward, when you think about support, the smaller the footprint, the less you're supporting, the easier uh, the support function becomes in steady state. Do we have consistent and meaningful data governance across the application? As applications evolve, we often have data issues where we may have the same data, but with different labels in the solution. This is going to undermine your data integrity and your reporting and your ability to create meaningful reports moving forward. So we're gonna look at data integrity and consistency to make sure that the application and any reporting that the application does is uh, as meaningful as possible for the business community. What devices are end users using to access the application? Is the application, what was the performance application like per device? Is it functioning well? Is it not functioning well? We want to optimize for the different devices uh, as we move through the application. Do we have a lot of issues, similar issues reported by the help desk? We will do an inventory and audit of all of the help desk issues encountered to date um, with, within the application. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at the root cause of some of those issues and try to make sure that we eliminate those issues in the migrated solution, again, so that end users are more comfortable and see a benefit to this migration. The learning that we do is constant. We will learn, we set these metrics up at the beginning in the design phase. We measure through each iteration. We measure once the full application is migrated and you should continue to measure once you're in steady state and you're operating. This way you can see what the trends are and you can see and you can analyze how things are working both on a technical level and from an end user perspective. And so we, we've set this constant rhythm of build, measure, learn up early as part of our, it, within our design cycle, we'll approach things that way as part of every build iteration that we do. And hopefully this sets you up for steady state and you can monitor and operate your system successfully moving forward, continuously delivering value to your business users. Thank you, Corinna, for that excellent overview. So during this webinar, you've heard a lot of interesting things about how Navantis can help you modernize your application. So a number of you may have questions. Obviously, there's only so much time today to go through stuff, but we welcome the opportunity to have conversations with you on this topic. So by all means, pick up the phone. You'll, you'll have a contact point at the end of this uh, presentation. But let's get together. We'll bring the coffee. Let's talk about how we can start driving value from the applications that you're running today and how can we spend more time doing grow and transform activities versus run activities. And then from there together, we can build a plan. One of the Novantis offerings around application modernization is the Boost program. Uh, the Boost program is for clients who have some applications or a Windows Server 2003 environment that really need a hand in moving forward. They're not exactly sure what to do they just need some help. So the Boost program allows us to come in, have some conversations around your current Windows Server 2003 environment, both from an infrastructure and application perspective, and go through a standard methodology and plan out things like your file shares and what you're doing about the applications and what you're doing about your domain controllers. Uh, look at what risks you have and, and build out a roadmap for you 
uh, as to how to get from you know your 2003 environment to a 2012 environment. And so if you want some more information, then the, the next slide here uh, points you to where you can read up or reach out to us around our Boost program. One of the options you have for your application modernization project is actually to let Navantis run it. So we talked about the run, grow, transform. And if you allow Navantis to run that application, you can then focus on the grow and transform opportunities in your business. So the idea is instead of moving it, you're simply buying a service from Navantis where we will take care of taking it from the old world to the new world. But then we will also make sure that that application is running well 24 by 7, that it's getting patched and updated, and you have the ability to leverage us for any future enhancements to the product. So after you move the application, you're just not in a position a year or two down the road where you're stuck again dealing with another move project. The Navantis Run program will allow us to take full ownership of that application. So again, you can focus on grow and transform opportunities. Kern and I would like to thank you for attending this Windows Server 2003 webinar. We know there's a lot of material thrown at you in a short amount of time, so we welcome the opportunity to follow up with you, have a cup of coffee, and dig further into the run, grow, transform concepts that we discussed today. Feel free to reach out. We look forward to hearing from you soon.